It being 201, I'd like to go ahead and call the meeting of the Florence City Design Review Board to order. Um, our minutes were emailed and mailed out to each individual earlier this month. So if I can get an approval or a motion for that, and then we'll move forward. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Also in your packet, the approval of our meeting dates for the year 2022 is attached. I get a motion to approve those dates. Make the motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. There's no national holidays this year. There was one this past year, so the bankers appreciate you not scheduling anything on this day. Yeah. <laughs> um, Case DRB 2021-30, we're not hearing that one, correct? That is deferred. Okay, yes, so that meeting has been deferred. Our first case for hearing today is Case DRB 2021-40. It's a request for a certificate of appropriateness to construct a commercial building on the parcel located at 2000, excuse me, at 221 West Darlington Street, tax map number 9008601. 012 located in the D2 downtown overlay district. Staff? All right. Thanks, everybody. All right. The applicant is requesting a certificate of appropriateness to construct an on the go fueling station at 221 West Darlington Street. Here's a vicinity map. Um, they will have access off of, are they requesting access off North Irby Street and West Darlington Street? And that will be through uh, DOT. Um, here's a little bit closer view. Um, it is in the downtown central as well as the re redevelopment overlay district. Um, and it is also in the uh, activity center zoning district. All right, so fueling stations have um, some development standards in the unified development ordinance. And one of those is at the front and the street side setbacks need to be 40 feet. Um, as opposed to um, in the activity center, principal buildings are required to be um, 15 feet. So, so that is a little more stringent than what you would normally find in the AC uh, district. Uh, here are some site photos. Uh, these are existing buildings uh, that did get DRB approval uh, back in October uh, to do a demolition. And the stipulation was that when the building and the hardscape were removed in their entirety, that the site would be vegetated, stabilized, and maintained. So it looks like concurrently they're going to do demolition and then go back with the proposed uh, 4,800 square foot convenience store. So here's just a few other photos of the property on the east side of the existing building. And then you can see the rear of the building. That's the purpose of the red arrow. And you can also see the Coit Street town, townhomes. Uh, in the background to give a little bit of reference. Uh, here's the northern perimeter of the property. Um, and in that picture in the background, you can see Hope Health. That's actually where their entrance is going to be off of North Irby Street. Um, and then uh, North Irby Street frontage, uh, just, a, just a different angle. Uh, and that is the former Griffins Motor Racing uh, in the foreground. All right, and just uh, one more picture. This is uh, West Marion Street frontage that the property actually has. And you can see the county complex in the background as well as the Coit Street townhomes and the little, the arrow is the existing buildings on site. So here is the uh, demolition plan in the existing uh, built site. So basically they're gonna remove the rest of those existing buildings uh, per their original designer V board case. And then here is the development plan. Uh, they want to construct a 4,800 square foot uh, convenience store. And they will also have a, um, a canopy uh, with seven fuel pumps uh, on, the, on the west side of the property. Um, and that will be about 4,500 square feet, uh, a canopy to cover the fueling station. Um, as you can see, you can see the entrance from North Irby Street. You can also see West Darlington Street. And the convenience store, you'll notice the front setback, the applicant is requesting that it be built 
10 feet from the property line instead of the uni uh, Unified Development Ordinance 40 foot building standard for fueling stations. Uh, here is the landscape plan. Uh, we are currently undergoing um, zoning, uh, zoning approval and engineering approval, working with the uh, designer and the applicant. We don't see anything that's going to cause major issues. The landscape plan is in compliance with the Unified Development Ordinance. Uh, the issue before the board, um, besides the construction of the convenience store and the, the fueling station, is just the, the the setback in the front. Uh, so here are some elevations. This is what they want the front elevation to look like for the new on the go. Um, this is a uh, 3011 uh, Alligator Road, but they do have some some color changes. Um, let's see the exterior. Um, materials will be exterior insulation and finish system, EIF S stucco, uh, a brick veneer, and a prefabricated aluminum awning uh, with metal frame glass windows and doors. Uh, we don't have any signage details at this time, but I'm sure that the wall sign will look very similar to that, and I'm sure they'll have freestanding signs uh, at either entrance, and we'll, we'll handle that uh, down the road when we decide on signage design. Uh, here are some uh, elevations of the of side of on the go and front uh, these just the one on the bottom is the same it's just uh, not as colorful and then also an elevation of what the fueling pump canopy is going to look like all right so the design guidelines um, the proposed construction uh, is oriented with the front of the building facing west uh, the building does not take direct pedestrian access from the sidewalk along West Arlington Street. Uh, so more of the visual emphasis um, is placed on the west side of the building as opposed to the south side. So that, that's, a, that's a little different than what the design guidelines um, uh, recommend. Uh, some other design guidelines. Uh, the property is located in the downtown central overlay in AC districts. Uh, the fueling station construction will be in keeping with the district's intention for urban commercial mixed-use development. Uh, the vicinity is characterized by a variety of commercial, institutional, and residential buildings, with some in need of re revitalization. Uh, again, the facade will be EIFS stucco with the colors that we saw on the elevation. Uh, brick veneer, aluminum awning, uh, will compose the building's facade, and the canopy will be constructed of a metal frame with a metal standing seam mansard roof, as shown in attachment I. Again, a 4,800 foot square foot um, building, parking lot, and the 4,500 square foot canopy, which will cover um, seven fuel pumps, will be able to serve 14 automobiles at a time. The height of the building is proposed to be 19 feet 8 inches, uh, which is well below the maximum set uh, by the AC district of 38 feet. And there are there is a mixture of different heights in the vicinity, including the 11-story Florence County complex, um, as well as a, a gas station across the street of comparable size and build. Um, other than that, uh, the building will be pulled up near the street, um, more of a, a, a build two line rather than a the 40-foot setback. Um, in keeping with surrounding building placement, the AC district would normally require just a 15-foot built-in line for new construction. Uh, but again, the 40-foot front setback for the principal building is specifically for fueling stations. Um, the design of the roof, the roof is flat, but there, there is a horizontal signboard on the front and left elevations about five feet higher than the rest of the roof, which will provide a little bit of visual interest and articulation from the ground level. Uh, landscaping, we saw the landscaping plan, and that does meet the intent and requirements of the Unified Development Ordinance. Uh, the scale of the building, uh, most buildings in the area are one to two stories in height. Again, you have some taller buildings. Uh, you do have some single family detached, so it definitely falls in that range. 
Um, and then the architectural details, it's kind of a myriad of different materials, colors, and textures. Um, and this one will be the stucco system, brick veneer, prefabricated aluminum awning, and then metal frame glass windows and doors. And there is an existing gas station across the street at 247 uh, West Arlington Street. So that does conclude staff support. Any questions of staff? I do have a question regarding the, the 10 foot setback versus the 40. What's the reasoning for that in this case? Um, I think that uh, due to the um, lot size and kind of the configuration and wanting to I guess more of a build two line. Right, and and we did, that is, um, the the applicant did come in several months ago talking with staff, and we, we felt like in the downtown area that um, pulling the building more towards the street would be more appropriate as opposed to having that 40-foot setback. Um, you know, in the downtown area, we would rather have the, the buildings pulled a little closer and push any parking and things of that nature to the rear or the side of the building as opposed to having the front parking lots, which is common in our uptown areas and the malls and the Walmarts and things like that and strip mall development. So um, we felt that from a design standpoint and a street um, view type standpoint that bringing it forward would be more appropriate for the district. And I know you guys, you mentioned the sidewalks, that doesn't interfere with any sidewalks or anything like that, does it? It, it does not. The building is still outside of the right of way and the sidewalks are out in the street side. So. And they're currently working with SCDOT to get encroachment permits for the sidewalk and make sure it meets ADA regulations for, for inclines and things of that nature. Yeah. Yes, so pulling the building forward was actually a, a staff suggestion. So you would consider that kind of an irregular shaped lot just because they were, it, it didn't look like there was much space to work with or other options? That, that that's right. It was an irregular shaped lot and um, the, the applicant worked in such a way to get it oriented so that it pulled things towards the street but, but allowed for that. Because it is a gas station, there will be vehicular flow obviously, so to allow for that as well. Jerry, was there in the um, Unified Development Ordinance, is there a reason why fueling stations are, for, are treated separately from a safety perspective or is that just I don't, I don't yeah I think um, and I think the pumps the pumps did have a different yeah the pumps are set back let me go back it's 20 feet. That yeah is what it is. is the are the pumps 20 feet yes sir yeah what is it in the unified development code oh that that's the fuel dispensers have to be the, the, and they are 20 feet, correct? Right. Yeah. So the, the fuel dispensers themselves, which is right. I think where the safety concern would come in, in the code they're required to be 20 feet and th they are meeting that. Yep. So, yeah. Okay, any other questions of the staff? Can, can you go back to the landscaping or the site plan? And, uh, where are the dumpsters? Are these the dumpsters located? That is it. Right now, it looks like they're leaning towards private pickup, but that does meet city standards for a uh, single dumpster enclosure, and it will have a fence, an opaque fence, uh, to block visibility. And, and so the pumps are on facing which side of the street? The pumps are, are under this canopy here. So that's West Sorry. Arlington, mm -hmm. yes sir, and then North Derby is perpendicular. That's right. And you can see where, you know, cars, so the cars would be, when they're, pump, when they're pumping fuel, would be parallel to Darlington Street. When the pumps are perpendicular. Yeah. I have one question, and I don't know whether it's staff or, or for the applicant. Is the elevation that faces Darlington Street looks a little different than the elevation here? Is that riding? Is that, is that metal awning that's kind of curved shown on the other side going to be? What is the, what's the elevation that's going to be facing? I mean, again, I don't. Whoever needs to answer that, I'm not sure. Yeah, I can I can explain it, and the okay. applicant can can fill in where I where I misspeak. But it's the, in this picture, it's the top image that would be the 
um, the elevation facing Darlington Street. Right. There's there's no ingress or entrance to the building uh, along that elevation. And the way I understand it is it would be um, on the on the two sides there, mm -hmm. there would be brick. And then in the middle section, it, it would be curved, uh, much like there, there one on um, Alligator. Right. But instead of having that metal kind of facade, it would have um, brick at the base with a stucco top to it. Um, but I'm not sure about the awning. It doesn't appear to be on this picture here. So I'm we plan on, on adding an awning. So the, the site plan that shows the curved awning. Right, the, the site plan is correct on there. There's not a full plan done yet, but um, yeah, the also in addition, what we did is try to emphasize the, the Darlington Street instead of exactly uh, right. So we've got uh, an awning going on that, but there is also some glass, but just not an entryway on there, just to make it look more like a storefront. Instead Perfect. Of, yeah, no. This elevation is uh, actually a little bit. It was a, a previous revision. Uh, I do have a copy of the, the latest one, but it, it, we just added glass and the, uh, the awning on the curtain awning on the Darlington Street side as well. I think it looks great. Any other questions of the staff? Okay, we'll go ahead and open up the public hearing. I know that the people are here have already spoken. Anyone have any questions of them? Any other questions? Y'all have anything y'all want to say on the project? And we can go ahead and close the public hearing. If we can get a motion. Congratulations, guys. Looks like it's going to look nice yeah. in that corner. Um, Thank our you second, very much. Our second case is DRV 2021-41, a request for a certificate of appropriateness to install signage at 286 West Evans Street, tax map number 901-6801-021. It's located in the H1 Historic Overlay District. Staff? And this this applicant is also requesting deferral okay. until next month's meeting. Okay. That is our last case. And there was something here, Jerry. You want to speak on that? Yeah, yeah, I did. I wanted to mention this. Um, Elaine attends the Timrod Park Neighborhood Association every month to, um, you know, I, I meet with them, uh, keep a relationship with the city, and, and um, also, you know, there for any feedback or concerns they might have. Um, there was a case that was approved um, back in 2020, let's see, yeah, 2020, and it concerned 423 Graham Street where a fence had been put in, a chain link fence. Um, I know some of you were members of the board when we went through that. And the solution was to plant some shrubbery around the fence such that it would screen it from public view. Uh, and we did have to work with the, um, it, it is a rental property, but the actual renter was the one that was taking responsibility for that and going to uh, install that shrubbery. And we did have a, a bit of trouble getting him to actually do it, but he, he ended up putting in some shrubbery. I, th I believe he put in, um, best I can recall, I'll have to ride back by because I haven't had a chance today, but I think it was Laura Pedalum that he ended up putting in. Um, but the residents are concerned that it's been 21 months since that was approved and the shrubbery that they have put in is struggling. So, um, you know, this just came to my attention today. Uh, so uh, what I'll do is I will follow up. I, I know the owner of that property. I'll follow up with him uh, since he's ultimately the one responsible for it. Um, and I can definitely report back to the board, but the but the Timrod Park Neighborhood Association did want to, I guess, lodge an official complaint on that. So, but I'll follow up with the property owner. Um, I know Codes has been involved in that in the past, um, and are and I guess have been actively involved. And if we need to step that up, we definitely can. So. Okay, so it would go through Codes first, right? It did go through Codes. Um, they were working with the actual renter of the property. I'll go to, to the property owner and see if we can get some resolve that way. Okay. 
Okay. He may, may need to supplement the planting there to, to get it, or, or supplement the soil such that, uh, that the plants can actually grow. Um, from what I remember, it was uh, some fairly infertile soil there as well, pretty sandy stuff, so. Okay, all right. Thanks for the update, Jerry. Yep. I'd like to thank everybody on the committee for their time for the city this past year. Uh, we appreciate your time and your commitment to make the city a better place. I want to wish you all all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and we'll see you on January 12th. We are adjourned. Thank you, Jamie.